Frag Attack Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for another episode of Frag Tag Radio. And uh, so here with you today, of course, your boy Pradius. And uh, today's a special episode. Uh, we're just doing a straight up Halo 5 Guardians review today. So uh, before we get into that, of course, got to get those plugs out there uh, with our partners over at Appy Gamer. Appy makes you happy. Great app on Android, iOS, Windows. Get it while it's hot. And then, of course, uh, Game On. Shouts to Troy on uh, iOS and Windows Phone. And then uh, Game and News and Reviews, which is on Android and iOS. All of them great apps. All of them free. All of them have tons of great news sources, including yours truly, Fragtag Radio. Uh, so definitely check them out on your mobile devices, tablets, computers, wherever you consume your content. You can also catch us on Stitcher, TuneIn, iTunes. YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, FragTagRadio.com. So, uh, pretty much anywhere. And uh, with that, it's time to pretty much get into the review. So, uh, I've had this for about two and a half weeks now, and the game comes out tomorrow night at midnight. So, I've had you know a lot of time to go through it. Um, at first, only the campaign was accessible, and then was it this past? Thursday the multiplayer servers went up so I was able to go through and play through a lot of the multiplayer and uh, get the finalizations of my review together um, after you watch this episode if you're interested in reading the full written review and getting all the extra details my written review is is it super in-depth so if you want if you want all the nitty-gritty details definitely go to fragtagradio.com check out the written review but uh, so this here is the video review and let's get to it all right so Number one, uh, Halo 5 has been billed as this big showdown between uh, Master Chief and Jamison Locke, or Spartan Locke. And, uh, of course, Master Chief is leading uh, Blue Team, and then uh, Spartan Locke with Fire Team Osiris. So, uh, pretty much, the campaign starts out, of course, uh, you're playing as Fire Team Osiris, and you're going to track down and retrieve Dr. Catherine Halsey from the Covenant and bring her back to the UNSC. Um, and pretty much from there, things get crazy. And then you uh, finally get to play as the Chief. You're exploring this Oni facility. Some crazy shit happens. The Chief is considered AWOL. Spartan Locke's considered, you know, sent to go after him. And then after that, some even more crazy shit happens. And then they're not even really after each other anymore. They're just trying to catch up to each other and take care of this threat, which I won't, uh, you know, spoil here, but, um, uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much, uh, the story in a nutshell without giving away any spoilers. Um, I gotta say, um, the campaign is good. Um, it's good. There's, you know, uh, a bunch of action-packed sequences. There's some others, uh, they do a good a good job of breaking up the actions. You know, uh, some of the missions are on foot, and some of the missions are more vehicle based. And there's actually a couple of different missions uh, that are more like like chill missions. Like uh, one of them drops you in like a uh, a colony town where you're going around and like questioning the uh, inhabitants, trying to figure out some information. And then there's another one where you're in like a Sangheili outpost in the mountains somewhere, and you can walk around and talk to the Sangheili. Uh, elites and stuff like that. It's, it's uh, pretty interesting. Let's do a good job breaking up the action. Um, my big gripe with Halo 5's campaign is that there's not a lot of Master Chief. And you play as Fire Team Osiris uh, for the majority of the campaign. There are 15 missions total in Halo 5's campaign, and you actually only play as Master Chief in three of those 15 missions. And, you know, it being Halo, you're expecting a lot of Master Chief. And the way they build it is like, you know, both of them face to face, both of them have equal portions of the cover art together. I was thinking half of the missions is locked, half of the missions is Chief. I was cool with that. But it turns out you play pretty much most of the game as Locke. And that wouldn't be so bad if Locke was actually a likable character, but he comes off as really dry, um, just really shallow, not much of a personality at all. Just not a very likable character. Um, thankfully, his teammates, uh, Buck, which is uh, voiced by Nathan Fillion, uh, and then his other two, uh, Vala and Tanaka, uh, hit 
the rest of Fireteam Osiris is actually pretty interesting, pretty cool characters. So it's actually a pretty good thing that they are because otherwise it would have would really slogged the game. Because like I said, Spartan Lock himself, just not an interesting character. And uh, it, it was a little bit of a bummer that you didn't get to play as the Master Chief in many of the missions at all. Like so only 3 out of 15. And uh, his fire team, uh, the rest of blue team, they seem like a really cool team. Uh, you know, Frederick and uh, and the other two, uh, the ladies. But uh, you don't really get to spend enough time with them to really learn much or anything about them. And, you know, I guess you could say that this Fall of Reach film is supposed to talk about their origins and maybe teach you more about them. But I would have liked to have learned more about them in the game itself. Um, and, and that just wasn't the case. So, um I finished the campaign with not really knowing much about Blue Team at all. Uh, they go out of their way during the campaign to let you know that, oh, they've, these guys have been together a long time and they're like family. But beyond that, they don't really tell you much about anything regarding them. So um, that was my only uh, real gripe as far as that. And then uh, lastly, the campaign ends in one hell of a cliffhanger. I'm talking Halo 2 levels of cliffhanger. It actually, you know, you, you think, uh, you know, a game like this, obviously it's a trilogy or a saga, you know, possibly more than three games. You you figure, though, at least at the end, there are a few questions are going to be answered while possibly presenting a few more to get you amped up for the next game. Well, the ending of Halo 5 is just more questions, and it doesn't answer any of the questions that we already have from playing the campaign. It's just... Leaves you with a bunch of questions. Big, big, hell of a cliffhanger. Um, you know, and, and it's not so much as a bad thing, but it's not a good. It's not a good thing either. You know, I, I just kind of would have liked to have had answers to a couple of questions. You know, a, you know, a little bit of closure. Um, you know, so that I'm not just sitting here waiting for two years. Like, come on, I need to get to that next Halo so I can hurry up and figure out the answers to all these questions. You know, hoping it answers those questions and not just presents us with even more questions. So. Um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, story-wise, the whole thing with Spartan Lock being a not likable and kind of shallow character, Master Chief only being playable in three missions, and the hell of a cliffhanger ending, I would say, that, you know, the story is about a three out of five frags. It's above average. It's good. It's just not great. It's not, it's not Halo 4 level campaign greatness. Uh, you say what you like about Halo 4 uh, and Halo 4's multiplayer, but I think it's undisputable halo 4 has had the best campaign out of all the halos and with this one i can safely say that it is still the best campaign out of all the halos 343 just did an excellent job with the campaign of halo 4 and they've done a good job again here with halo 5 it's just just not quite up to that level of halo 4 halo 4 was just such an excellent campaign um and you know it's it's always hard to talk about a campaign without giving away any of the details. So pretty much I can I can't tell you much more than what I already have about the campaign. Um, you get to pilot you know of course scorpions, ghosts. There's one mission where you're you know controlling a, a, a mantis through pretty much the whole mission. That's a pretty cool mission. Uh, the settings, oh my, uh, the detail that 343 has put into this game is absolutely stunning. The art direction is amazing. Um, the wide open space is the first mission where you go to uh, retrieve Dr. Catherine Hall. So you're going along this cliffside and there's this giant battle taking place in the skies around you with like, you know, banshees flying around, attacking UNSC ships and all sorts of stuff going on around you. And it just feels like this giant battle is going on around you and you're just one smaller piece of the puzzle going in there to infiltrate and get Dr. Halsey out of there. So they did a really good job uh, with the settings, the locations. Um, all the levels are really, really, really well designed. Like I said, those details are really great. Uh, the water effects, just like there's parts with waterfalls in the mountains and you're walking through puddles um, uh, at certain parts. It's just the water effects are really great. Uh, the details on the armor, the facial animations and, and the expressions and the way they captured, I guess, with the mocap stuff of the actors' faces. They look just like their real-life counterparts, maybe even better in some cases. Uh, it's just a great-looking game. And it's got, the, of course, the uh, dynamic scaling uh, where, you know, it's pretty much... The resolution changes. It's going up and down anywhere from 720p to 900p, all the way up to full 1080p, depending on what's going on on the, on the screen, how much you know stuff is going on. Uh, I gotta say, you know, I didn't notice the resolution changing while I was playing. So, you know, I I know it was changing just because you know, dynamic scaling it had to have been, but. I didn't notice it. it. It looked pretty much the same to me the whole time I was playing. And I'm playing on was like a 50, 55 inch 4K TV. 
So this is already taking a 1080p image and upscaling it to something close to 4K. So if it's 720p, you're taking 720p up. It, it, it looked great the whole time. I couldn't tell the difference. Uh, maybe that's just me. Maybe I got bad eyesight, but I don't think so. You know, the campaign, the graphics, it just, just really good. The art direction is just amazing. Uh, the sound effects, they've done a really good job with the sound effects in Halo 5 Guardians. Um, especially in regards to the the weapons, all the weapons just sound so hard hitting, so powerful, and you know combine that with the haptic feedback triggers of the Xbox One controller, and the weapons just feel really good in your hands. Um, if you remember back to Halo 4, certain weapons like the Promethean pistol and a couple of the Covenant weapons just weren't quite up to par. They felt really weak, and you never picked them up ever, just because. That weren't viable. Well, um, 343 has done a really good job of going back and, you know, touching up and balancing all the weapons really well. Every single one of the weapons feels powerful, feels viable at any given situation. Um, you know, so if you run out of ammo, you can feel free to pick up that Promethean pistol off the ground and know that you're still going to be able to kill enemies with it. And it feels great while you're doing it. Sounds great. Uh, speaking of sounds, the Spartans are. You know, traditionally Halo has been like a real floaty game. You know, you can jump and just float up in the air and uh, all that bunny hopping and stuff. And pretty much, that's pretty much gone now. Um, and I know some people might say that, well, that's Halo, and it's, it's not going to be Halo without that. I gotta disagree. Um, it still feels it still feels like Halo to me, just better. Um, the Spartans being more grounded, I think, feels right because the Spartans have always been big and bulky with this really big, thick armor, and it just made no sense that they were just floating around. So. Um, like I said, it just feels really good, and you, you can actually, between the sound effects and the haptic feedback, you can feel the weight of your Spartan as you're sprinting around, your boots clunking against the ground, and you can still jump, and uh, you can actually climb up vault over cover now, which is a really good addition. Um... I, I, just, I just, uh, really enjoyed the campaign. Um... Like I said, the, the sound effects are really amazing. Um... There is is co-op in the campaign. Um, unfortunately, there um, is not any split screen, which isn't really a problem for adults like myself. You know, I play with most of my friends over Xbox Live anyway. They're at their homes. I'm at my home. But for younger people, you know, uh, like my son, who's going on 12 years old, big Halo fan, um, he has friends over the house a lot. You know, come spend the night, hang out. Um, they like to play games split screen. So it's kind of a bummer, you know, especially, you know, uh, for the kids that, Halo 5 doesn't have split screen and you know say what you like about you know not a lot of people use split screen or for the game to be as good as it could be they didn't need it but split screen they should have put it in there they should have found a way I don't care what compromise need to be made you know even if even if even if you know when you're playing single player by yourself the game plays at full resolution and if you're playing split screen it backs it up to 720 resolution I would, the whole time I'd be fine with that you know as long as split screen is there that's what matters so a um, little bit of a bummer that there's no split screen there but co-op still is amazing especially if you're playing on heroic or legendary difficulties uh, actually if you're playing co-op I recommend you play on at least heroic or uh, legendary difficulty because normal um, it's eh, so so uh, by yourself I wouldn't call it a challenge but I wouldn't call it super easy either you know you can pretty much just you know make your way through like normal blasting away being a superhero being being a Spartan uh, so you know when, when you're playing co-op you've got that extra you know one two three maybe even three more maybe if you've got four of you you should play it on legendary for sure um, but yeah, so uh, uh, the campaign is also a lot more team-based now that you're not just playing as four different Master Chiefs, each fire team, whether you're playing as Fire Team Osiris or occasionally as Blue Team, uh, each each you know four separate characters. So your co-op friends will be playing as their own unique characters. Um, you can point out enemies by hitting uh, up or down on the D-pad. Um, if if an enemy goes down, it'll bring up an icon on the screen with a little health plus sign, and you can go over there and revive them. It's a lot more a lot more team based uh, than previous Halo campaigns, and I think that's a really good addition as well. Especially since most people always played Halo campaigns co-op anyway, it just makes sense to you know make it more team based and and have these new additions with the reviving and the pointing out stuff and and the commands it's just uh just really well done so that was a, a very good addition um 
I guess uh, overall, though, the campaign is a little bit of a mixed bag. Um, I would say the story overall is good. Um, the missions are the missions are well designed, great. Like I said, everything's great. It's just those little things that bring it down, like eh, Spartan Lock and the Chief not only being in three missions and that cliffhanger ending. But yeah, overall, I would say a good campaign. But uh, so where Halo Five really, really, really stands out is the multiplayer. Um, of course, you've got the normal arena modes, you know, uh, Slayer, Team Slayer, uh, SWAT, Capture the Flag, and then you've got the brand new Warzone, uh, which is just amazing with 24 players. So, uh, first of all, Arena. Um, I, you know, played through some Slayer matches, Team Slayer, SWAT, Capture the Flag. I didn't have any Griff Ball, um, but... Since I was playing it pre-release, they were there. Uh, the playlists were very limited because they're not, you know, only journalists and YouTubers and MOG players and certain people had early access to the game. So the playlists were a lot smaller and consolidated to make sure you were you were able to get into a match quickly. Um, so, like I said, uh, Griff Ball wasn't up there. I wasn't able to play any Griff Ball, although I certainly hope and I expect it to be there, if not at launch, soon after, because I, I love Griff Ball, um, and I, I'd like the chance to play that. But uh, from what I played, I really enjoyed uh, Capture the Flag and SWAT the most. Uh, Capture the Flag, especially when you're playing Capture the Flag on one of the maps where your team has a base on this side and the enemy team has a base on that side and it, it, it just feels right you know um, sometimes capture the flag takes place on one of those maps where you're in a facility and they're on one side of the facility and you're on on the other side of the facility and it doesn't feel like you you have your actual own base um, I like it better when you're playing on on those on those maps where you have your own base they have their own base and you're trying to infiltrate each other's base capture the flag bring it back score your own that type of stuff um, uh, like I said, uh, four versus four in the arena multiplayer, classic arena multiplayer. The loadouts from Halo 4 are gone. Everybody starts with the assault rifle and the pistol, and then you go from there. Power weapons spawn on the map. If you want to get better weapons, go towards those power weapons. And it actually has a timer on the power weapons and will alert you when they're about to spawn, when it's like 10, 15 seconds away, 30, 10 seconds. It'll let you know. So, you know, and, and not just you, but everybody. So when that timer is getting close, you can bet there's going to be a firefight around where that thing is about to spawn, which I think is pretty cool. Um, and, you know, it, it makes an actual battle over the power weapons, whereas before, and I think older games, you never really knew when they were going to spawn, and only really hardcore players knew exactly where and when they were going to spawn, so they always had the power weapons, and people who were less experienced or played less often had less of a chance. I really love the way they've done this by making the power weapons clearly marked, letting you know when they're about to spawn, so that it creates these firefights around them, and then, you know, best man wins, uh, gets the power weapon, that type of deal. Um, I think that, yeah, that's, that's really well done. Um, SWAT, of course, everybody has a battle rifle, and that's it, straight up. And your battle rifle has unlimited ammo, um, and of course, and you know, you don't have a lot of health and shields like you do normally, you just a little bit of health. If you get shot once, you're pretty much dead. Sometimes you could get shot twice and maybe get away, but beyond that, twice you're definitely dead. Most of the time, one shot, you're dead. And, so, and that's what I like about it because it, it, it forces you to play a little bit more carefully, a little more strategically. You don't just run around corners, running and gunning like you do in normal Halo. You actually take your time going around corners and play it a little bit more carefully. It, it, it's a good a good change up from the normal uh, arena modes. Um, and then Warzone. Oh my goodness, Warzone is just so great. It's like big team battle meets Halo Reach's invasion mode. It's like they put those two together and then added AI enemies in there and requisitions and it just gets crazy. So the maps are freaking huge. Um, my favorite uh, variation of, of Warzone is the one where you start on one side of the map, they start on the other side, and there's bases along the way that you can capture between each other. And what you want to want to pretty much do is exit out of your base, capture the closest base to you, and then go capture the next one, and so forth, until you've pushed the enemy back all the way to where they all they have left is their base. And then once you get in there, you can open up their core, destroy the core, and get victory. Now, if a match is taking too long, you can also win by the first team to get to a thousand points. Uh, the more points you have captured, the more the more points you'll, you'll be accumulating over time. 
time, the first one to 1,000 wins, or the first team to destroy the other team's core wins, whichever comes first. Um, I know a lot of people were worried about the microtransactions, how you could, you know, purchase rec points and rec packs or whatever. Um, you can do that, uh, but you also earn enough points, I'd say, to purchase uh, a rec pack. Uh, well, if you want to buy the, bar the bronze one, you can buy a pack pretty much every match. But uh, if you want to get the good silver or gold packs, I would say every... Every other match, you pretty much have enough points to get a to get to get a silver or gold pack, and those have the, the rare, super rare, legendary items. Um, the type of wrecks uh, that you get from the packs vary. Uh, they could be one-time boosters to give you XP, extra XP for as for kills or for assists or for just winning the match overall. Um, or it would uh, it could m unlock weapons for you for you to use uh, in Warzone, like more on battle rifles, fuel rod cannons, plasma cannons, you know, whatever. Um, and then also vehicles. You unlock vehicles, ghosts. War, uh, warthogs, uh, mongooses, gun gooses, uh, wraiths, scorpion tanks, banshees, they're all there. And um, so the way it's done, everybody starts out a war zone match at level one. And as you play through the match and you get more kills, more assists, die more times, whatever, you'll slowly level up your requisition level more. And by the end of the match, you and the rest of everybody else will be up to level six or whatever, and then that that's when everybody is just busting out the scorpion tanks, the wraiths, the banshees, and shit just gets crazy. And uh, it's just really a ton, a ton of fun. Um, like I said, and and due to the fact that you can't, you know, just straight up start a Warzone match and bust out your big requisite requ requisite requisitions right away. You have to actually work your way up to it. It doesn't matter if so-and-so spent $50 on a bunch of gold packs and has all this stuff. He can't call it out until the very end. And by the time you get to the very end, you're going to be calling out your vehicles and everybody else is going to be calling out their vehicles too anyway, so it doesn't even matter. Um, the only real perk, I would say, to spending money and buying all these gold requisition packs uh, would be to get the uh, rare or super rare or legendary armor to make your Spartan look cooler. Uh, and that's just all cosmetic stuff. It has no effect on the gameplay of the game. I mean, obviously, some players will probably still get jealous um, but, you know, if you feel that strongly about it, you can spend some money on it. Or you could just play more matches and earn some points to uh, unlock the rec packs and get them on your own. Um, when I was playing, I was unlocking a rec pack pretty much every match, sometimes every other match. And every time you level up, you get a free rec pack to open. So uh, you're pretty much constantly getting requisitions. And there's no real... I, 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 I don't see the brouhaha uh, over over the microtransactions because they're really, really, a, it's really a non-issue. Um, so, yeah, uh, all, uh, Warzone, it's 12 on 12, 24 players. Um, there's different maps, different modes. Uh, there are different variations of Warzone. I just told you about one. Uh, the other one that I played is a defense mode where... If you're the defending team, you have a base and, you, and you're defending it. And the other team is attacking, trying to take that base from you. And there's a six-minute timer. So if you're defending, if you can survive for that six minutes, it's victory. If you're on the attacking team, you have six minutes to take over that base to win. Um, and this mode, I think, actually could use a little bit of balance tweaking because every single time I played on the, on the defending team, I won. Every time I was on the attacking team, I lost. It seems like the defending team has a much more bigger advantage from being inside the building already and just waiting for you to come in and get the drop on you. Um, so, and since they're doing that, they're getting kills faster uh, because, you know, you're going to be, you know, dying a lot try, uh, attacking the base trying to take it over where they're just defending it so they're not dying as much so they're building up their requisitions faster breaking out the bigger guns faster which makes it even harder to get in there toward the end of the six minutes and so i think there there needs to be some balancing there i think um 
for that mode, the attackers need to get their requisitions a little bit faster so that they actually have a fighting chance to actually take over the defending base. Um, otherwise, it's just not going to happen. And then the defending team's always going to win, and it's going to get to the point where people are going to start quitting out of matches, and that's just not cool. Um, so as you're playing, you'll be ranking up. There's actually two separate ranks. You've got your regular old rank, which you'll be ranking up one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. And then uh, you've got your, I guess it's like a classification rank based on how good you are and how good you're playing. And there's like six different medals, uh, which is like bronze, silver, gold, and you know, uh, a few more uh, up in the tier. And, you know, based on how good you are, the more matches you win, you can move up. Uh, in tiers but doing so you know will match you up against more players of that same tier who are you know uh, better better players so if you're a good player the game is going to match you up with other good players if you're not such a good player it's going to match you up with other players of the same way so that it's, it's always you know at least you know fairly a little bit balanced and you're not always getting your ass handed to you you can at least you know feel like you're holding your own uh which which i think is good the uh matchmaking the way they put that up it's all very well done um there is no voting on on which map gets played next, which I think kind of sucks a little bit. Um, I, you know, every shooter these days has has multi has matchmaking voting on which map comes up next. Now, obviously, some of the shitty maps get uh, never voted for and never played on, but I think that's for a reason. The maps are shitty. People don't want to play on them. I think if you force people to play on maps and it ends up being a map they don't like, they're just going to end up quitting out anyway. Now, granted, they've put... Um, penalties in there if you're a person that quits out a lot rage quits a lot team kills a lot you know whatever it's going to hit you with penalties it might lock you out of matchmaking for an hour maybe two maybe the rest of the day uh depending on the infraction how many times you've you've, you've screwed up um but uh yeah so you know overall if you're not a quitter you don't got to worry about that um another cool thing about warzone ai enemies spawn on the map you'll be fighting prometheans covenant uh promethean knights which are like the the bosses that spawn on the map or like covenant elites which are like the, the covenant bosses on the map and then uh if they normally spawn in areas that haven't been captured by either team. So you'll get a report that, you know, Prometheans about spawn in this area. So you can go over there, and if your team is able to defeat them first, you can capture that point and start gaining points for your team. If the other team can, uh, defeats them before you and captures it, then, you know, they start getting the points. But it's pretty cool because it leads to this battle where you're going in there and you're trying to kill the AI op opponents, but you're also trying to kill the opposing team at the same time so they can't take down the opponents and capture the point for themselves and it gets really hectic um really cool i just re really enjoy warzone um the maps themselves are really well designed uh arena uh, there's a ton of maps for arena um and they're, they're always really well done my favorite map is a map called fathom which is like an underground sea lab and like the ceiling is like glass and you can look up and see like whales and fish swimming overhead while you got this you know firefight going on down below inside this lab it's pretty cool um and the Warzone maps, are, there's not as many Warzone maps as there are Arena maps, but, you know, big scale, um, I, don't, I don't think it's going to matter that much in the grand scheme of things, and I'm sure they're going to be adding more over time. I think I played on four different Warzone maps, um, and at least ten different Arena maps, so... And they're, like I said, they're going to be adding more maps over time. Um, and they're going to be adding them for free, which is really cool. Um, they're going to be adding more maps to Halo 5 over time for free, which is great because it's not going to split split the, the, the player base. Most games like Call of Duty and other ones like that, they come out with the season pass and half the players buy the season pass and half of them don't. And it splits the player base in half. You've got half the player base playing on all the maps with the DLC and everything and the other half of the player base that is just playing on the regular regular old maps and you know then it becomes a little bit of a problem and then sometimes you're trying sometimes you're trying to play with a friend and you have the maps and they don't and you have trouble playing together and that's a problem so it's really cool that they're going to be adding maps more over time for free rather than charging for them 
And uh, I think that's really where these whole microtransactions for the requisition packs come into. So you can you can pretty much pay what pay what you want. You can spend money and help support the game and get some extra uh, rec packs or not. And either way, you're still getting the multiplayer maps for free. So I, I think that that's that's a, that's a really good way to do it. And I think actually more games should do it like that. I think multiplayer maps this should set a standard, and multiplayer maps should just be free from now on. Uh, but, you know, of course, that's probably not going to happen anytime soon, with all, you know. But it would be nice. Uh, let's see. So we talked about, you know, uh, pretty much everything uh, as far as the multiplayer. Um, we talked about the movement, uh, the smart link system where you're aiming down the sights. Um, you... It creates like a holographic sight. Depending on which gun you're using, the holographic sight will be different. Sometimes it's on the top of the gun. Sometimes it's on the side of the gun. And, you know, some people are saying that iron sights aren't Halo. But it's really cool, and I love it. And I think it fits right into Halo. It feels Halo to me. Um, and what's really cool about it is unlike Call of Duty, where if you're getting shot and you can just keep aiming down the sights and shooting, in Halo, if you're aiming down the sights and you get shot, it brings you out of your holographic sight and you're no longer looking down the sights. You have to go back into it or star start, you know, hip firing. Uh, and that, I think that that's a really cool way to, to balance it out. Um, also, in previous Halos, you had Spartan abilities, which were like pickups or perks for your loadout. Not anymore. Everybody can sprint. Sprinting is unlimited unless you get shot. Getting shot either takes you out of sprint or slows you down considerably. You've also got the Spartan ground pound, which you jump up in the air, hold the right bumper. It creates an icon on the ground showing you where you'll hit. You let go, and then bam, slams into the ground. You can take out enemies that way. Um, and then also the other Spartan ability would be the one you jump up in the air and hit the left trigger to aim down the sights, and you're pretty much like... It's almost like slow motion or almost like freezes you in the air a little bit. You're able to hover in the air for a couple of seconds, which gives you time to aim, shoot at enemies below you, and then come falling down on them, which is, which is just really cool. Um, and if you do it right, you can actually jump up in the air. If you do it high, aim at the enemies, shoot at them a little bit, and then switch it into a ground pound, which is just, just, just really cool, and you can devastate people that way. Um... The different types of armor that you can unlock are really awesome looking. Um, I got the one which looks like the samurai armor. I think it's called the tension armor. Uh, just really cool looking. Uh, you can customize the colors of it. You can customize your emblems, uh, your service tag. You can customize your stance. They have different assassination animations that you can equip. Um, the customization is just, just phenomenal. And almost boundless because you're always unlocking new stuff to customize with uh, not just armor and helmets but weapon skins as well and you equip a weapon skin like say for your assault rifle or your pistol or your battle rifle you'll always spawn with that skin on so uh, that's pretty cool um, and I believe that pretty much wraps up just about everything um, just uh, one more quick quick rundown like I said the campaign great campaign I'm just not a big fan of Spartan Lock and I wish we could have played as Master Chief a little bit more um, the multiplayer absolutely phenomenal arena is a ton of fun but Warzone is where it's at I'm loving Warzone I'm having a ton of fun with that and I can see myself playing it for a long time to come if you are a Halo fan Halo 5 Guardians is a day one must buy for you straight up Day one must buy. If you're not a Halo fan, if you've never been a Halo fan before, I would say still Halo 5 is worth checking out. Uh, you might feel differently about it because the the, the, the feel of the game is just, it, it, it's, it's still Halo, but it's a little bit different now, which I think is a good way of making it, you know, bringing Halo back to its roots and making it feel Halo, but still kind of feel fresh and new at the same time. Um, 343 did a really good job of everything from the graphics to the sound effects to the uh, orchestrated soundtrack. Um, like I said, the gameplay is good, the level design, the, uh, the art design, art direction, everything is just really great. My only real complaint are those two couple of things with the campaign uh, with Spartan Lock and not playing as the chief uh, for, and only doing it for three missions. But, uh, but yeah, and then the multiplayer is phenomenal. Talked about all that. Uh, it's just an absolutely great game. Uh, I would say four, uh, four to four and a half out of five frags, uh, maybe four, 4.25, uh, which is, which is a great score. 
great game. If you're a Halo fan, go pick it up. If you're not a Halo fan, I would say still check it out. If you've got a friend who has it, go over to their house and play it. Or just take the dive. You know, pick it up. Buy it. Give it a try. If you haven't tried Halo in a while, it's worth it. Uh, and there's a ton of content in there for your money. Uh, like I said, tons of packs, tons of unlocks, tons of maps. The campaign has a lot of replay playability. It's, it's, it's just a really good package. Um, but yeah, so that is my review for Halo 5 Guardians. If you want more in-depth coverage... Please do go to fragtagradio.com and check out my written review. I will be coming back to y'all again probably next week uh, with some more coverage. I got some more frame stuff to cover uh, as well as a few more things. So be looking forward to that, and I'll catch y'all on the next episode. Peace. Fragtag Radio.